Howdy folks, Jambariki here. Warner Brothers Animation Division has an iconic legacy behind its animated shorts, but when it comes to its feature films, they're pretty hit or miss. In this video, I'm going to be revealing my choices for the top five best Warner Brothers animation films. What are the rules? One, only theatrical movies. So don't expect any straight to video films or TV movies. Two, only films that were produced by Warner Brothers' own animation division. That includes post-production involvement. Just because Warner Brothers put their logo on an animated film doesn't mean that their animation division worked on it. Don't forget that Warner Brothers is also a distribution company. Three, I'll be counting movies that blend animation with live action because these films still credit Warner Brothers animation for being attached. Let's go! Number five, Cats Don't Dance. Danny is a countryside cat who heads to Hollywood to become a star. However, when he gets there, he realizes that animals aren't given big parts in movies, and meets the struggling veteran performers Tilly, Woolly, Francis, T.W. and Cranston, as well as a secretary called Sawyer who gave up her dreams of stardom. It also turns out that child actor Darla Dimple has her thumb over Hollywood, because she's the studio's prized star. So Danny must inspire his fellow animals to believe that they deserve the spotlight too. Now, I used to have mixed feelings about this film, but re-watching it for this video gave me a completely new perspective. The film is all about reaching your dream career despite the disadvantages created by industries. More specifically, how Hollywood underrepresents certain communities and rewards those who live up to a fake persona. Cast Don't Dance uses the characters of Danny and Sawyer to explore conflicting philosophies idealism versus realism, and optimism versus pessimism. These are two characters who stubbornly stick to their own mindsets, but must learn from each other to find a healthy balance of realistic expectations and an ambition for success. Danny, I, they I, don't care. But don't I, you I, get it? What is it with you? Why are you so determined to make a fool of yourself? What do you mean? All I want to do is the thing I love. Doesn't everyone? <laughs> Together, Danny and Sawyer represent the perfect harmony of hope and truth, which is what makes them such an unstoppable act as a duo, all while they share the stage with the veteran character actors that an ageist Hollywood abandoned. Contrast these ideals with Darla Dimples, someone who is so spoiled that she tries to crush other people's dreams to keep her own career alive, while putting on a sweet, innocent little girl act for the media. Our heroes believe in sharing the stage in the name of equality, but Darla wants the spotlight all to herself and mocks the very idea of animals being entertainers. She's a symbol for the dark side of Hollywood, someone who embodies malicious intent, creepy inauthenticity, and selfish manipulation. It also helps that this film has terrific animation that's clearly been supported with a big budget. It's expressive, fluid, and lively, but also has moments of pathos and soul-searching. Darla's villainous over-the-top character animation in particular always steals the movie, because it's got this rubbery quality that inspires devious, deranged, and flamboyant expressions and poses. Every frame perfectly fitting an emotionally unstable narcissist who switches personalities at the drop of a hat. Can the movie slapstick get carried away sometimes? I guess so, kind of. But it certainly does a good job at recapturing the dynamic energy of classic Warner Brothers cartoons and the film does know when it needs to slow down for more sentimental moments. Oh, and the musical numbers in this movie are fantastically catchy. Each one has a high-spirited rhythm that'll make you want to tap your feet and dance along. I got a song to sing. You don't like my song, I'm gonna sing it anyhow. Even if you don't like Broadway-inspired songs, you'll at least get some fun out of Darla's spectacular operatic villain number. I can't help but really resonate with this movie where I am in my life right now. It's a story of struggling performers trying to get noticed in a climate of phony vanity. This eerily mirrors my own career as a small YouTuber. Seeing these underappreciated animals challenging all odds and expectations to stand out is the kick in the butt I've needed lately. But the thing is, Cats Don't Dance's message of defying the impossible is very universal. It could easily speak to anyone at all. Number four, the Lego movie. Emmett is an average Joe living in the city of Briggsburg, but when he finds the Brick of Resistance after work one night, a woman called Wildstyle informs him that he's the special. Under the guidance of the wise wizard Protruvius, Emmett must train to defeat Briggsburg's tyrannical leader, President Business. When this film was first announced, people were very skeptical about the idea of a movie based on Lego. 
However, once the LEGO Movie actually came out, everyone's expectations had been proven wrong, because it was a massive success that redefined a whole cinematic subgenre, and proved that these kinds of movies could be more than just long commercials. The most appealing aspect of the movie is its adrenaline for creativity. LEGO isn't just an aesthetic for this film, it's the heart and soul of the journey, because brick building itself is threaded into the fabrics of this universe. A world where mastering LEGO blocks is a respected field. The LEGO movie also earnestly encourages audiences to find the creativity that comes with LEGO toys, preaching that instruction manuals are more basic suggestions than Bibles to strictly abide by. Look at all of these things that people built. You might see a mess. Exactly. And a bunch of weird, dorky stuff that ruined my perfectly good stuff. Okay. What I see are people inspired by each other and by you. People taking what you made and making something new out of it. It's also simply a very, very, very funny movie. Lord and Miller find a lot of humour from the inherent silliness of Lego figures. Stubby little plastic people with stiff limbs and claw hands. The comedy quick fires joke after joke in every scene, as the filmmakers imaginatively spot a dozen things to poke fun at in a successive rate. This is real music, Emmett. Batman's a true artist. Mm -hmm. Dark, brooding. Well, I'm dark and brooding too. <gasps> Guys, look a rainbow. The Lego movie is also a clever satire of the Chosen One narrative too. You see, once Emmett finds out that he's not the special, and that Petruvius made up the whole thing, he comes to realise that defining his uniqueness is in his own hands. We might all wish that we're individually connected to some kind of legendary prophecy, because that would be reassuring in this scary world. But such a fantasy is irrelevant when we all already have the potential to do great things. We just have to carve out our destinies ourselves. It takes a recycled Hollywood trope, roasts it until it's crispy, and then twists it into an opportunity to inspire the audience. The film also uses its dystopian narrative to poke fun at the ridiculousness of propaganda entertainment. Cheesy songs and tacky TV shows that only exist to distract oppressed citizens. It's quite bold to see a family-friendly movie using toy characters to satirise regimes like the Kim Dynasty. Especially when Bricksburg's showbiz isn't too different to the brainwashing used in North Korean media. Although, as much as I love this movie, it does suffer from a few family film cliches that I strongly dislike. From the friend with unhealthy jealousy issues who gets the girl by the end, to the fascist villain who gets to keep his job and serve no jail time, even after controlling and endangering the lives of an entire population. Yeah, the film gets a bit too carried away with giving everyone a happy ending. Despite these issues, I still think that the LEGO movie is an awesome film. A sincere love letter to LEGO toys, they sent out to motivate audiences to leave the cinema feeling creatively inspired. Number 3. The LEGO Batman Movie Bruce Wayne loves the fame and adoration that comes from being the superhero Batman, but his ego is tested when the new commissioner, Barbara Gordon, announces that she wants Batman to be part of the police force, rather than serve as a lone vigilante. At the same time, Bruce has unwittingly adopted a little boy called Dick, who accidentally stumbles into the Batcave. So Bruce decides to make Dick into his new sidekick, Robin, but Batman won't treat Robin like a real son. Meanwhile, the Joker is sick of Batman not taking their hero-villain relationship seriously, so the Clown Prince decides to use the power of suggestion to trick Bats into sending him into the Phantom Zone, where he convinces the villains of the multiverse to join forces with him. Batman has to team up with Barbara, Dick, and his loyal butler Alfred to defeat these pop culture villains and save Gotham from Joker's reign. The Lego Batman movie takes the brooding drama of the DC comics and the wholesome innocence of Lego toys, blends them together like a smoothie, and creates a mix of both brands that legitimately works. It's very much the story of a grieving man learning to love again, which isn't new territory for a Batman movie, but the film knows that. I'm a little concerned. I've seen you go through similar phases in 2016 and 2012 and 2008 and 2005 and 1997 and 1995 and 1992 and 1989 and that weird one in 1966. So he tries to approach it with a more self-aware angle. What we end up with is a movie that uses goofy comedy to dissect Bruce Wayne's fragility. A movie in which every joke is an excuse to poke fun at the Cape Crusader's desperate need to look cool or seem invulnerable. I'm gonna have to go into double secret super vigilante mode. You said that out loud. I know that she said I said that out loud, but there's no way I did. She has no idea what's going on in my super mind. Super mind? <gasps> but the movie is also very sympathetic towards Lego Batman. We do pity him for trying so hard to compensate for his loneliness. This is where his loved ones come in. Barbara, Alfred, and Dick are much healthier and happier characters, because they wear their emotions on their sleeves, making them the perfect people to break down Bruce's wall. Audrey, please. 
Don't do this! Batman, you need us! How many times I gotta tell you? Batman works alone. Bruce, who is suffering from the trauma of losing his parents, can't handle the idea of being part of a family again, but you can tell that a side of him also craves for company so much. This is why Batman's character development is so engaging. We're essentially watching this insecure superhero coming face to face with his flaws and fears. Huh. You're not a traditional bad guy. But you're not exactly a good guy either. Padre? You even abandoned your friends. What? Go on, Scummer. Go! Batman, no! Don't do this! Abend- No! No, I was trying to protect them! But another star of the show is the Joker. Lego's Joker is a really memorable take on the character. He's still a bit unstable and eccentric, but he's also a lot more emotionally sensitive and delicate compared to most Jokers we've seen before. This Joker is portrayed like Batman's heartbroken ex-boyfriend who is handling the breakup badly. The film isn't even subtle about the queer text, folks. Batman doesn't do ships. What? As in relationships. There is no us. Batman and Joker are not a thing. I also think that this is the Warner Brothers movie that uses its intellectual properties the best. These famous movie characters aren't just background filler or contrived cameos. No, they're very integral to the story, because their distinct skills play into Joker's scheme. Like, Sauron's eye helps Joker surveil the city, Voldemort's magic gives the clown prince an upper hand, and the kaiju are tasked with destroying Gotham's buildings. Plus, all these villains develop a sympathetic bond with Joker that makes their relationship more than just a crime partnership. Listen, Batman. I... hate you. Oh, that's nice. Now you say it. Me too. I also think that this is the most visually appealing LEGO movie. Artistically, the other LEGO movies are pretty, well, random. But the LEGO Batman movie has some genuinely beautiful shots, many of which help reflect Bruce's loneliness. There's also a consistent palette of warm and dark colours too that give the film a strong art direction. The Lego Batman movie is a hilarious and sweet-scented superhero comedy that explores the importance of self-reflection, validates the love of a chosen family, and brings a childlike innocence to a comic book franchise that's best known for its serious brooding. Number 2. Batman Mask of the Phantasm Bruce Wayne is enjoying his playboy lifestyle while still committing to his job as Batman, but when an old flame of his called Andrea returns to Gotham, old memories are sparked back. At the same time, a mysterious figure is going around killing Gotham gangsters, and Batman must work out who is behind this phantasm's mask. Batman the Animated Series was always a very cinematic TV show, a visually striking homage to classic film noir and darker Batman comics. So it's no surprise at all that the series inspired a feature-length film. Mask of the Phantasm uses a non-linear storytelling style to deep dive into Bruce Wayne's transformation into the Cape Crusader as well as the romantic relationship that briefly helped him to find joy in his life after losing his parents. While Bruce is recalling these memories, he's also dealing with this cryptic phantasm character, an angel of death-like figure whose very identity eerily mirrors that of Batman, except that the phantasm is willing to kill the criminals that they hunt down. Phantasm and Batman are one and the same. There's a duality there, yet they're walking different paths. The film is never on the nose about who is behind Phantasm's mask, but the more we learn about Bruce's past, the more things start adding up, which makes the final unmasking heartbreakingly disappointing, yet also a natural conclusion. This phantom spirit was a ghost of Bruce's past all along. Look what they did to us! What we could have had! They had to pay! But Andy... What will vengeance solve? Mask of the Phantasm does introduce the Joker into the mix, but he's not here for the sake of it or to fill some kind of villain quota. No, you see, Joker is the very monster behind the death of Andrea's father. He's the reason why yet another grown adult is dressing up at night stalking criminals. And the Clown Prince loves that he wrote that punchline. Gotta hand it to you, nice scheme. Costume's a bit theatrical, but hey, who am I to talk? It's the smaller scenes in the film that hit the hardest, though. Somber moments that strip away the Batman mythos and let us look into the soul of Bruce Wayne, someone who has been presented with a righteous destiny, but can't embrace that role when he's finally found true happiness. Please. I need it to be different now. I know I made a promise, but I didn't see this coming. 
I didn't count on being happy. There's this melancholic dysphoria to the atmosphere throughout the movie, the kind that only the theatrically gothic world of an animated Gotham could inspire, a place where hope for a brighter future is now a relic of the past, and the knight protecting it is hiding his own trauma under his armour. I always feared you would become that which you fought against. You walk the edge of that abyss every night, but you haven't fallen in and I thank heaven for that. But Andrea fell into that pit years ago, and no one, not even you, could have pulled her back. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is a brutally honest look at the human condition, a film that acknowledges the man behind the mask like no other Batman movie, as it profoundly examines the heartache and pain of Bruce Wayne's nostalgia. It really is a masterpiece of both animation and superhero cinema. Before I reveal my number one pick, I'd just like to remind folks to consider subscribing to my channel, and if you're already subscribed, don't forget to click that notification bell. Thank you. Number one, The Iron Giant. Set during the 1950s, The Iron Giant follows a young boy called Hogarth Hughes, who finds a metal creature from space and decides to befriend it. Luckily, Hogarth's friend Dean reluctantly agrees to let the giant stay in his junkyard. However, a federal agent called Kent Mansley arrives in Hogarth's town to investigate reports of the giant which leads him to suspecting Hogarth of harbouring the creature. The friendship between Hogarth and the giant is this wholesome connection between a wide-eyed boy and a robot with a childlike mind. It really is adorable. See this? This is called a rock. Rock. Good. That is a tree. Hogarth also instills important values and truths in the giant that inspire the movie's talking points. Throughout the movie, the giant comes to experience harsh truths that make him contemplate his very existence, giving the movie an opportunity to philosophize about life's most existential questions. You die? Well, yes, someday. I You're made of metal, but you have feelings, and you think about things, and that means you have a soul, and souls don't die. With Hogarth's help, the giant comes to learn that he's just as human as these earthlings, and that he could be whoever he wants to be no matter how others perceive him. We're also consistently reminded about the film's Cold War setting too, from the movie opening on a looming Sputnik orbiting Earth, to Hogarth's class being shown a nuclear attack PSA. But Hogarth isn't afraid of the unknown, and that's why he's the only one willing to give the giant a chance, while Kent Mansley has let the paranoia consume him. You know, Hogarth, we live in a strange and wondrous time the atomic age. But there's a dark side to progress, Hogarth. Ever hear of Sputnik? Yeah, it's the first satellite in space. Foreign satellite, Hogarth, and all that that implies. To the point where he'll eagerly give up his every waking minute to expose Hogarth's secret and prove that this giant is a dangerous alien. Kent is so ridiculously obsessed that he ends up becoming the butt of most of the film's jokes. Just hold that thought and stay right there! Ooh. This was also a very personal film for director Brad Bird, because his own sister was a victim of gun murder. This family tragedy motivated Bird to pose the question, what if a gun was sentient and didn't want to be used to kill people? That intention comes through very vividly in the film itself, because even after realising that he's actually a war machine from another planet, the giant still believes that he's not a gun, but instead, the very superhero that he idolises in Hogarth's comics. You are who you choose to be. The Iron Giant is a cinematic triumph that effectively protests against gun violence and lampoons a rational American paranoia, all while weaving in a poignant message about every person's free will to be whoever they want. It's been more than two decades since The Iron Giant came out, and Warner Brothers Animation hasn't made anything better since. Heck, they've not even come close. Which just goes to show how timeless, mature and outstanding this film really is. So those are my choices for the top 5 best Warner Brothers animation films. Which are yours? Let everyone know in the comments section below and don't forget to click that like button. Cheerio folks!